Karen Joanne Graves of Retreat Road, St. Lucie, entered peacefully into rest at age 52. Daughter of the late Evans and Irma Graves, sister of Euraline Yearwood, aunt of Ryan Griffith, cousin of Vivian and Donna Hines, Frances Hines Griffith, Anita and Joan Edwards, Deborah, Gail and Craig Smith, Sean and Eric Norville Smith, Jacqueline Harper, Jabbar, Timu, Kwame and Kofi Hines, McCasey and Makeda Griffith, Doriel King, Nicole Aline, and many others. Relative of the Norville, Innes, Eiffel, and Bowen families. Friend of David Griffith, Celeste Ford, Linda Goodridge, Marilyn Jackman, Pat Huggins, Karen Thornhill, Diana Clark, Jean Codrington, the management and staff of CIBC First Caribbean International Bank, and the St. Swithin's Church family. The funeral of the late Karen Joanne Graves leaves Earl's Funeral Home on Wednesday, October 11th, 2023, for St. Lucy's Parish Church, where relatives and friends are asked to meet for the service of Thanksgiving and the internment at 3.30 p.m. Live streaming of the funeral may be viewed via watch.earlsfuneralhome.com forward slash Karen Graves. Goodness of God. 
the goodness of God I will see of the goodness of God I'm gonna see of the goodness The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. My strength is failing The end draws near And my time has come Still my soul sings your praise Unending Ten thousand years and then forever Sing like this 
the splendor of a king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all will see how great how great is our god age to age he stands and time is in his hands beginning and the end beginning and the end the Godhead three in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb Lion and the Lamb How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all our God name above all name name above all name worthy of all praise my heart will sing how great is our God it's the name above the name is our God and all will see how great how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name Burn 
Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor debt, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this in Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing. Great. 
great God we offer of thine own to thee, and for thine acceptance proffer all on worthily. Hearts and minds and hands and voices in our choices shall ever be. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity of the best that Thou hast given, earth and heaven rest. Please be seated for the reading of the first scripture lesson. Thanks be to God. We will now have a tribute. This is from Karen Thornhill. I joined the organization April 1999, where I met Grave V, as we will call Karen, at the IPS. She joined me at, in ABT, government remissions, the processing of salaries, etc. Our small department under the supervision of Mrs. Diana Clark consists of Caroline Harper, Elsa Edwards, no Drake, Kim Seeley, no Beckles, Harriet White, no Clark, Sherwin Cumberbatch, Design Cumberbatch and myself. At Cotsford House, we were a small team with great responsibility. Processing of salaries, manual and electronic, remission of government stamp duty and income tax, smart stream, pensions, balancing the ABN, just to name a few that you may not have a clue what we are talking about. 
Karen at the time was responsible for the ABM balancing and smart screen. Always punctual and well maintained down to her vehicle, which I always admired. Our department had to be so focused, as Mrs. Clark would always reiterate, exercising due diligence, etc. There was no room for error. I guess you can call me the only one, but I could not wait until Mrs. Clark leaves to give a joke or share an experience. She was always the one for order. Then say, Tarnhill, you're a goat. Now that we know that a goat in 2023 is greatest, greatest of all time. Fast forward to Robert Street. Karen was my junior supervisor, and we were in the height of CD2, the merger of Barclays and CIBC. And if you didn't know a person during that time, you got to learn them. Pressures were on, persons were agitated, customers were unkind, do not get in their money. GL lines were out of whack where we needed to get overrides. I remember one time Gravy went to lunch as she returned. I called out to her override. She responded, let me cool my foot. And I tell you, the period was hot and not only the weather but the office. Her car was so well maintained. I shared that I had to get brake shoes for my 91 to herself. She replied, I don't know if mine has shoes or socks, but as I see a light, I go straight to my mechanic. It would appear that I followed her at business center where she trained me on standing orders in the verification department and trade services. I move over to cards fraud and we would chat at the elevator and she's checking on my children until COVID where meeting in the foyer would be slim to none. However, we had walked up. Grizzy, you will be missed. I miss our chat, but I'll remember goat. Not the animal, but greatest of all time. Sleep on, sister, sleep on. This is from me personally. I met Karen in January 2004. I was returning to work on maternity leave and the CIBC staff had moved over to the office in Robert Street, the now police headquarters. On meeting Karen, I was a bit scared because she had this extremely serious face and hardly spoke. At that point, she was the supervisor in my department. I remember Karen being a very no-nonsense person and did not to tolerate persons slacking on the job. I did my absolute best to avoid any encounter with Karen. So that meant I had to make sure I had no errors which would require calling for an override and ensuring my balancing was on point to avoid her wrath. In 2013, our team went through a restructuring and Karen and I ended up being on the same team but performing different functions. This is when I really got to know Karen. The serious face was just a mask. Karen was the softest person I had ever met. She was very passionate about her job and cried easily. She then revealed to me that I too had a very unmarried looking face. <laughs> that was my real lesson into not judging a book by its cover. I also learned that we had a lot in common. We attended the same secondary school and would oftentimes compare notes about some teachers we encountered. I was, that I too was also a country girl. I'm born and raised in the lovely parish of St. Lucy. And the infamous Graves name, as my grandfather was also a Graves, so I checked with the grandparents to find out if we were related and that was confirmed. We would also discuss our dogs, in which Karen revealed that her dog was very special because he didn't live in an ordinary dog house, but a wall structure which I used to do, they probably had a kitchen sink and a toilet. And with that, Karen would laugh and say, man, no, man, Juanita, no. Karen didn't have kids, but she treated this dog like it was. Over the years, Karen would either come to me for my opinion on an issue or just a vent. This is when I knew that she appreciated me because we all knew Karen was very reserved. This brings me to when Karen told me she was sick. We met at this very church um, as I was delivering a, a gift basket to her from the team and stood in the car park for two hours just talking. This was when she revealed to me how serious her illness was, but was determined to get back to work. 
Counting down to the day she had her follow-up appointment, I revealed that there was no longer any traces of the disease. She was elated. Fast forward to the end of last year, she called me and reported in her small voice, Juanita, it's back. But Karen was still determined to get better and get back to work. I would check in periodically to update her about work and team. Whenever she heard about new persons coming in, she would say, try and not give away my seat here. It remained vacant because like Karen, I believe she was coming back. I messaged Karen early September to check in while on vacation and she informed me that things were not going so well as she had spent a couple of days in hospital. Fast forward to February 29th, September, I received a call that Karen had passed. I was left in absolute shock because I knew how hard Karen fought to get back to work and I knew, knew how determined she was to just get better, but God knew best. You no longer have to endure the pain, and we will miss you in the office, your sneaky jokes, and your sudden bursts of laughter. Rest in peace, Gravy. Psalm 46. Rest, he 
eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Kindly be seated for the reading of the second scripture lesson. from the Word of God, from the book of Romans, chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now have the reading of the eulogy. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, good evening. Uh, firstly, I think I should extend thanks to Ms. Juanita Yearwood Clark and the staff at CIBC First Caribbean International Bank uh, for those tributes and words that were offered earlier. I think it provided for us a very unique insight into Karen or Gravesy's uh, office exploits, which some of us were not privy to before. So thank you again for that, and please uh, express our thanks uh, to the staff at CIBC First Caribbean. Today we gather to celebrate the life of a remarkable soul, a quiet strength that touch all of our hearts. As we remember the life of Karen Joanne Graves, I recall the profound impact that she had on each of our lives. Karen was born to Evans and Irma Graves. I knew Evans as Uncle Matt. On June 14, 1971, I'm told that Aunt Irma was over the moon at having her own baby girl after adoring her nieces over the years. Karen was educated at St. Swithin's Primary School, Hilltop School, and the Corrigan Parish School. After leaving secondary school, that's when she joined CIBC, now CIBC First Caribbean, and worked there for more than 30 years. As we heard earlier, Karen was very dedicated to her job and always strived to do her best. She was indeed looking forward to returning to work following her sick leave, but unfortunately that was not to be. She navigated her career at the bank with a quiet determination, demonstrating that 
true strength lays not in the noise we make, but in our actions and the depth of our character. As we heard from Juanita, the mask that Karen wore was just that. Uh, her serious face hid an underlying, jovial, and very loving person. Her dedication to her work was really only matched by her commitment to our loved ones. Karen was reserved and, as we know, had a quiet disposition. And this is really how she lived her life. She maintained a fierce spirit, fierce spirit of independence throughout her life, even towards the end. She inherited a love for animals from her mom, Auntie Irma, and had a particular fondness for dogs, especially her beloved Chico, who we know lived lavishly in his stone mansion. She was so worried about Chico as her illness progressed because she felt that none of us, not one person in here or anyone she knew, could take care of him the way that she could or the way that she would. Karen also loved to cook and bake and she believed that she was the best chef in the family. Uh, the footnote there is that she believed she was the best chef in the family. <laughs> And her black cake and coconut bread were legendary, as was her macaroni pie. If you've never had a chance to have any of it, you really missed out. I can say firsthand that our Christmas family gatherings will never be the same without those trays of macaroni pie provided with the compliments of Karen. I made it a point to sneak in the kitchen every Christmas and make sure that the aunties had mine well parceled away. While she did not have children of her own, it became routine for her to take care of all of her younger cousins and taking them under their wing, showering them with birthday and Christmas gifts and taking them on various outings to Bridgetown, which included various errands and even matinees at the cinema. And you can tell by the specific use of the word matinee, the vintage of those cousins whom she <laughs> Would have taken out. <clears throat> Karen poured her love and affection into every relationship, and I believe that she left an indelible mark on all those who knew her. As we reflect on Karen's life, let us not dwell on the sorrow of her passing, but instead, let us celebrate the beauty of the person that she was. Today, we bid her farewell with heavy hearts, acknowledging the immense void that her passing has left us that can never be filled. But also remember the lessons she taught us, to be kind and to be patient. Hearing, Gravesy, <laughs> Cousin Kay, your legacy lives on in the life you've touched, in the lessons you've imparted, and in the love you've shared. We love you, and we miss you dearly. And although you may be gone from our sight, you will never be gone from our hearts. As we say goodbye, we find solace in the knowledge that your spirit lives on, watching over us until the day dawns when we are reunited once more. Rest in peace, Kay. You fought long and you fought hard. You've earned your rest, and your memory will forever be a blessing to us all. To him, great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my 
evening I speak in the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly be seated. The eighth chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Romans verses 38 and 39. For I am sure I love the virgin Linda read from this evening, the King James Version says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. My brothers and sisters, who want to die? You want to die? Talk to me. I know when I was a little boy, and that wasn't too long ago, my grandmother used to say, boy, don't talk in church. But I give you permission to talk in church this evening. Do you want to die? Okay. Next question. Are you afraid of death? Huh? No. So many people, so the answer just came from so many people, they don't want to die, but now you know, you're not sure whether or not you're afraid of death. I don't want to die yet, but I'm not afraid of death. And you know, as Christians, we are not afraid of death. And why? Because the one we serve, the one we love, Jesus Christ, he has destroyed the last enemy called death. And he has destroyed death for you and for me. Jesus Christ has left death stingless. For St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 asked the question, or rather he said, O oh death, death is swallowed up in victory. Jesus Christ pulled the sting out of that dreadful thing called death. O oh sting, where is thy victory? O oh death, where is thy victory? My brothers and sisters, the one we serve, the one who is at present preparing a place in heaven for us, will someday return to receive us unto himself. And that is the reason why we are not afraid of death. Because the word of God tells us that if we believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead, so will God bring with him those who fall asleep in him. Yes, death cannot and will not separate us from Jesus Christ. And that is the message St. Paul gave to the Christians at Rome so many years ago. And it is the message he is given to you and to me at this evening. That no matter what happened to us in this life, no matter what we may have to go through, what we may have to endure, it cannot and will not separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. St. Paul says that no pain will separate us from Christ Jesus. He says that no suffering will separate us from Christ Jesus. Yes, the vagaries of life, my brothers and sisters, shall not prevent us from being with Jesus Christ in the sweet by and by. Yes, that dreadful thing called death will someday pass our way. The only way death will not pass our way is if Christ comes before we die. For the Bible tells us that when Christ comes, there will be some who will still be alive, but they will change. They will change because this body of ours, this body of ours, this flesh, 
and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So then Christ comes. The Christ who is making a place ready for us. When he comes, we who believe and trust in him, we who die believing in him, shall come forth from the grave. St. Paul tells us that Jesus shall return at the sound of the trumpet. And I believe the trumpet is going to soon sound. I don't know about you. I believe it's going to soon sound because we are seeing all the biblical predictions come into pass. All the prophecies of old are coming to pass. Jesus is about to put in his second appearance. We are told that when that trumpet sounds and Jesus descends from the heavens, the graves will be open. Yes, no matter how much mold go down us. And don't fool yourself, sometimes a lot of bay rocks go down too. But they cannot prevent us from rising from the dead. Yes, when those graves are open, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Listen, it says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. If you want to rise first, you better live in Christ here. So that you will die in him. Because if you don't die in Christ, you're not going to rise first. You will rise, yes. But not to go with those who rise first. Those who rise first from the dead will be caught up in the air. Rather in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And Paul says, so shall we always be with the Lord. Those who rise after those who have risen first will be with the devil. You don't want to be the devil, huh? Because they're easy in hell, you know. You hear people here talking about they smell hell here. They ain't smell no hell yet, you know. And you don't want to go to hell? Hell wasn't made for you, you know. Hell was made for the devil and his ants. Heaven was made for us. That is where God wants us to live. And that is why Jesus is preparing a place for us. So that we will be free of all pain and all suffering. But if you behave like the devil and his ex, you're going to end up in hell. And as I said, it ain't sweet there, you know. There's fire there. And that fire real hot. And believe you me, you can't call over Arch Hall and ask them to say the fire engine, you know. No fire engine don't help. And let me tell you, you die longer than you live. So you will be burning longer than you live. And that is not what Canon Goodrich is saying this evening. That is what my Bible tells me. And I believe if you read the Bible, you will see that too. There will be a separation. The sheep from the goats. You are not a goat. We are sheep. The sheep on the right hand. And the goats where? Where's the left hand? Where's the left hand? What do you think is the left hand? Huh? Hell. You don't want to be on the Lord's left hand. If not, you will end up in hell. And if you don't want to end up in hell, you got to live with Christ now. You got to make, make your calling and election sure. You must go through this world with your life wrapped up in the Lord Jesus Christ. We got a lot of people who want to behave and get on as if they made themselves. They want to get on and behave as they like. And then expect to be with God in the sweet by and by. Oh no, it doesn't work that way. 
And we got another set of people, a set of young people. I see a lot of young people here this evening. Who do you want it? Want to say, okay, I'm going to live as I like when I get old. I, you got an old age put down? No? Huh? You have an old age put down? No? You don't know when this last blessed breath will be taken off your body? You can leave here this evening and go outside and drop down. God forbid, I want that to happen. But we have a lot of people procrastinating, putting off serving Christ. And then the only time you see them come to church where they come up like this. You know, the number of young people I spoke to, I've spoken to about coming to church at the time when they get a little older. And don't fool yourself, the young ones seem to be dropping faster than the old ones, you know. And I don't want to scare anybody. But that's reality. It is reality. If you don't live with Christ in this life, you cannot expect to live with him in that life which is to come. And so you have to make the decision now. Now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. You need to make the decision now to serve the Lord, to praise the Lord. The dead can't praise God. It is the living. And so if your desire is to be with the Lord, if you do not want to be separated from Jesus Christ in death, then you have to hand your life over to him. You have to make the decision to allow Jesus Christ to be at the center of your life. Yes, I know to live the Christian life is not an easy one. Because when we make that decision to walk the king's highway, the devil comes after us. The devil tries to prevent us from walking the king's highway. You think the devil, like what we're doing here this evening? You think the devil, like the message that God is giving to you this evening? I believe the devil telling some of y'all, don't mind him, man. He's talking foolishness. And perhaps you sit and don't think about all sorts of things now rather than concentrating on the message. You think about when you get back home, what you got to prepare for supper, huh? When you get this supper now, the word of God, and you need to read, mark, and learn inwardly, digest the word of God. Yes, it is not easy to serve the Lord. But as long as you made that decision, Jesus is there with you. He is traveling with you. And he will provide you with everything that is necessary to do battle against the devil and be victorious. For he tells us that his grace is sufficient, the all-sufficient grace of Almighty God, as long as you serve him. Yes, the devil will come. You can't prevent him. But Christ Jesus will enable us to overcome the devil. You know, we have to persevere. Sometimes as Christians, we feel like giving up. Because sometimes we question God. Yes, we question God. I am serving you. Why are you allowing this to happen to me? Why are you allowing these things to happen to my friend and I'm serving you all day, all night? But remember what Jesus says. He says that each and every one of us has a cross to bear, a cross to carry. And believe you me, cross bearing is not easy. And we know that from Jesus Christ himself. 
For when Jesus Christ took that heavy wooden cross, traveling up that hill to Calvary, the Word of God tells us that that cross is so heavy that Jesus Christ fell under the weight of the cross. Three times. And each time he fell, he got up. Thank God that Jesus Christ got up. Because if he didn't get up, he won the air this evening. But he knew only too well that the destiny of this sinful world, your destiny and my destiny, depend on him going to Calvary. And so he was prepared to go to Calvary, to suffer, to bleed, and to die on that old rugged cross, an emblem of suffering and shame. He was prepared to do that for you and for me. It wasn't easy. Which one of us in here this evening would die for a friend? And if you're honest, you would say no. I would have to think about it too. I'm honest. I would have to think about it too. But Jesus, he was determined to die for us. Remember when Peter, the apostle, tried to prevent him from going up to Calvary. Peter was saying to him, Lord, there's that cross. They want to kill you up in Jerusalem. Why are you going up there? And St. John's Gospel tells us that Jesus Christ set his face like flint. Hard then. Peter couldn't move him. He was determined to die because he knew that is what he came for. He came to this world on a rescue mission to rescue you and to rescue me from the grips of the devil. And he knew that in order to do that, he had to go to Calvary. And so nothing, no one, was going to prevent him from going to Calvary. Thank God this evening that Jesus Christ went to Calvary. And because he went to Calvary, we have hope. There's hope for us. Because he went to Calvary, we know, we know that we too shall die, but we shall rise from the dead. All of that as a result of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, my brothers and sisters, even death shall not prevent us from being with the Lord Jesus Christ. In life, as well as in death, the Christian is in Jesus Christ. For I believe, and I believe it is, I, 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 I believe that you believe that too, that death for us is only but a gateway to a higher, a richer, a sweeter life if our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in heaven. And so if you want to join your loved ones, if you want to join your sister Karen in heaven, because I believe she's going there, I prepared her. I gave her, I was called, and I gave her the last rites. And I could see the smile on her face. She knew what was happening. So I prepared her for death. And I believe that she will be with her Lord when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ shall rise. I believe that she will be among the first to rise. And so if you want to enjoy life with her again, if you want to see her again, then have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Open up. Open up your heart and invite Jesus Christ to take his rightful place in your heart. In the words of one psalm, even there where you are now, sitting there, 
you can in all sincerity and honesty open up your life to Jesus and say to him, take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee. Only if you say that and you mean it from the depth of your heart, my brother, my sister, Jesus will make a change in your life. All you need to say is come to my heart, Lord Jesus. There's room in my heart for thee. Yes, find some room in your heart for Jesus. And as long as that comes from the depth of your heart, Jesus will take his rightful place in your life. And when that happens, you will see what a change will come about your life. As the songwriter says, what a wonderful, my ch wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. When Jesus comes into your life, brothers and sisters, you cannot and will never be the same again. A change is, is bound to come about. Just open up and you will experience that change. Just think about that lady with the issue of blood. She didn't even touch Jesus. She touched him of his garment. What happened? She was healed. If you would only reach out and call out to Jesus, my brothers and sisters, a wonderful change will come about your life. And you will be on your way to glory land. Is that too much for you to do? Huh? Is it, isn't, is it too much for you to give Jesus your life? Think of what Jesus did for you. Think of how Jesus gave his life on Calvary for you. Is it, is it, is it too much for you to hand your, your life over to Jesus and allow him to take full control? He wants to do it, yes. He wants to enter your life. He stands at the door of your heart, knocking, seeking to enter. But you have to open the door of your heart. Jesus will never force himself into anyone's life. Oh no, he wants to get in, yes. But he will not force himself into your life. You have to open up the door of your heart and invite him in. And I urge you to do that even if you have not done it yet before you leave here this evening. Jesus can make the difference in your life. And so nothing in the past, in the present, in the future will separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So brothers and sisters, what are you going to do? I'm not going to have an altar call this evening, but I, I leave it to you. What are you going to do? Are you going to make right with the Lord? I can only urge you. I can only beg you. I can't do it for you. I got to do it for myself. Because I got to see God for myself. I can only give you the message God laid on my heart this evening. So it's, up, it's left to you to take it, to accept it or reject it. But I urge you to accept it. Let Jesus make the difference in your life. you have a golden opportunity. And an opportunity lost cannot be recalled. Now is the time. And so it is my prayer that each and every one of us in here this evening will have a closer walk with God. And so as we give God praise and thanks for the life 
and work and weakness of our sister Karen. We pray that the Lord she knew, and the Lord she served, would have mercy on her soul and grant her a place with all his saints in glory everlasting. And now to all her sovereign relatives and friends, I extend to you deepest sympathy. And it is my hope and prayer that the good Lord, the Lord of comfort, the Lord of peace, will strengthen and comfort you as you now prepare to adjust your life without the physical presence of your loved one. May God bless you this evening. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord, that light perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. That is all. Shoulders the load I open. This is the vibration for my voice mask up the microphone. Okay, anyhow. Thanks be to God. We should now have a solo by Amanda for you.
Let us pray. After each petition, your response will be hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life that you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, may we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the dying, strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace of joy, the joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled, and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Carrie, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in our Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with you and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Please stand. Let us commend our sister Karen Joan to the mercy of God our Maker and Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power, you have given us to life in Christ Jesus. We entrust Harry, Joanne, to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son of the Lord, who died and rose again to save us and is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory forever. Amen. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord. May she in all the faith of the party through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may the God of peace who brought again from the dead of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ of our Lord. Amen. Let us now sing the hymn, To God Be the Glory. And during the scene on this hymn, a collection will be taken to assist with the ongoing work of God in this part of his vineyard. To God be the glory. <laughs> Good. 
the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, three things he hath done. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Hearing Joan, depart, O Christian soul, out of this world. In the name of God the Father Almighty who created you, in the name of Jesus Christ who redeemed you, in the name of the Holy Spirit who sanctifies you, may your rest be this day in peace, and your dwelling place in the paradise of God. Amen. We shall now sing the Nunc Dimittis. Be the glory of his 
Christ is risen from the dead, struck in death by death, giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness and Glory is risen, giving life to those who start in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord is leading the darkness, and the way that well. Right? All who believe. My father. turn away anyone who believes in me. 
He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies to raise and dwell in spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life in your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth says the spirit they may rest from their labors for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of woman has but a short time to live. Like a flurry he blossoms and then withers, like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy hear our prayer, forgive us our sins, and at the last hour let us not fall away from you. Ensure uncertain hope of resurrection to eternal life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister caring Joanne, and we commit a body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this of a sister caring Joanne and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who haven't finished their course in faith now find rest and refreshment. May we with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life we may rest in him, and at the resurrection receive that blessing which your, which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and advocate. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all our bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life of those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Amen. And unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Raise it for us.
all get to happen. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing out will be. When we all
precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to Precious Lord, and lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ my Savior standing standing I'm standing on the promises of God
this club looks like. And to the third, the nation and the evening comes and the bigger world is up. The season of life is over and our work is done. The Lord in mercy grant us safe lodge in the holy rest and peace at the last. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed for the mercy of God.